Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. It's good to see you all virtually once again. We have in the house today, Phil Healy, NorCam Studios, amazing program coordinator and jack of all trades. Has the best opening that I've ever given you on a show, by the way. And then we have... <laughs> am I being fired? That's what I'm asking next. <laughs> with an intro like that. You'll know, you'll know next week with your check uh, total. You'll know with your check total, so... <laughs> And then we have Tom Smith here in the house as well, too. So welcome, guys, to another episode. It's great to virtually see everybody here once again. Um, we have a lot of different things to talk about here with sports involving baseball. We're going to start with first. I'm going to start with baseball first as we have the World oh, Series are going we? on. Yeah. We are going to talk baseball first. Is it because you first. made an incorrect statement last week? Face the facts. You know, it's a fact. You know, I was Can wrong, I... so... Hold on. Let me let me try to hold on one second. Let me see if I can share something here. Go right ahead. One second. Let me see if I can <laughs> share something guest. here. First my bubble. Go right ahead. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, look at this jerk. Can you hear this at all? I no. can't hear myself. Oh, I can't hear yourself. Hold on one second. Hold on. That second. might not be the worst thing in the world if I can't hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Today they play their next game. You don't have days off and anything. I am rooting for Tampa to represent the American League in the World Series. And then right on that. I am rooting for the Braves. <laughs> what? Whoa, wait, 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 for some I reason, thought I did. For some reason, haven't won since '88. Bring out the gravy boat. Again. There's no way. There's no way I can see this Atlanta team allowing the Dodgers to come back. What a clown! <laughs> what is it? Because they, I mean, the Dodgers—they've been so, there. They're perennial. Yeah, there we go. Um, you know, I think uh, Dave you know, Roberts is getting fired. To tell you the truth, I think that. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Was that was that Nick Face or Roger Goodell so, out there on that? No, show? that was Michael. That was Michael Felger. That was Michael Felger <laughs> making an appearance on the show. He just transitioned. Remember, it's Halloween. It's right around the corner, so people get those masks and everything, <laughs> in all different sorts and different sizes and all. And Michael Felger sat in my chair last week. What a jerk he is! Yeah, and then there was a that, dog toy two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, there was. Sorry, I'm not well in the head. <laughs> no, sorry. Hey, but on, in all honesty, who thought that was going to happen? I mean, uh, I mean Detroit. 3-1. Uh, it, it, it's happened multiple times before. I mean, come on now. All right. All right, Tom. I was thinking for some reason on my breakdown and analysis of that, I didn't want to see that happen because – there has only been one team in baseball history so far that's come back from a 3-0 deficit to win a series and turn around, and that is the 2004 Red Sox. That is a complete, valid, truthful statement right there. So have at it there if you want. Um, I don't want to see another team kind of become that Cinderella story and be like, okay, well, we're down 3-0. We're going to change the course of history here and we're going to do it ourselves. So that's where that sentimental feel comes for that 2004 team. And it's not to say that I'm not a fan of the Dodgers. It was more to look at the series and just say, wow, three, one, the Atlanta's just absolutely kind of taking control on things at that point last week. That's how I felt with Atlanta. So that was my justified take. Well, the Dodgers clearly surprised everybody and they were able to do something that, I mean, they've choked for years, guys. They've choked. 1988 was the last time they won a World Series. It's been a long time for them. No, I mean, so they've a, had yeah. they've had letdown after letdown after letdown for a long time, and I thought that that might continue. It could still continue here in the World Series. It could. I, I don't right. know. We don't. And that know. would be that would be a Cinderella story if uh, Tampa ends up winning. I mean, I wouldn't really consider the Dodgers. I, it's going to be a while before I consider the Dodgers to be an underdog team. The Dodgers have everything right there. They got the rotation. They got the big contracts. They got everything right there, right in front of them. And if they lose here again in a World Series, that's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, agree. I, yeah. I would like to see Tampa win. 
I am rooting for Tampa. That's who I am going for. I am hopeful that Tampa wins the series. That does not mean I think they're going to win the series. I'm hopeful, though. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. See how cl- I'm being very particulate today about my annunciation and my takes today. Because I – annunciation. 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 I am announcing that – Oh dear. I, I, I want Tampa. I want Tampa to be our winner. Go, yeah. But we shall see what had happens. Right now we have a one 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 series. Yeah. And I believe tonight you'll have Zach no, I'm not uh Greg, They're not playing they're not playing tonight. They are not oh that's right. They aren't playing tonight. They have an off night. It's, it's a Friday travel they day. resume. Yeah, and it's also NFL football. So that's why for Fox oh, and man. that and it's the lovely debate. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that's uh, why they didn't have the game then. So they'll resume again on Friday. I believe uh, Tampa will go with – what's the uh, the 35-year-old guy? Kind of like Porcillo. What's his name? Um, he won game seven. Won game seven. Why can't I think of his name? Why can't I think of his name? Oh, no. I'll but think I, of it in a second. But I am but, I'm I'm looking forward to whoever wins. I think this is a, for us or as a fan myself. I think if Tampa wins, I think that's if Tampa Bay wins, I think that's great. If the Dodgers win, I'm I'm cool with that cuz I actually I, I you know, I'd love to see Kershaw win. I mean, if it happens, it happens. I'd love to see Dave Roberts as right. a manager win. And also Mookie, I'm not going to lie. I'd like to see Mookie win another one cuz it it just shows like, wow, what a bad move. <laughs> Charlie Morton. Charlie Morton. That's who was on the tip of my tongue. So oh, yeah, Charlie yeah, Morton has is, is, is been one of Tampa's very good starters. But credit to Blake Snell. Blake Snell pitched a great game last night for Tampa. So that was great. Tyler Glass, Glass now was the one that got rocked in that first game. So up for anybody. It's up for grabs. We'll see what happens here in this World Series. The other reason why I wanted to talk about baseball first is because it's going to start that free agency period where we're going to start hearing some information on where certain players or certain um, certain um, maybe managers or GMs or all that kind of stuff is going to go. Well, there is one particular hiring that should be very simple and very easy for the Boston Red Sox, and that is your manager spot. I have my choice, but I want to ask Phil and Tom who their decisions would be for the 2021 manager. I mean, I'm sticking I mean, with what I, I would have been I, saying. But yeah. go ahead, Tom. I mean, I think I think Phil and I are on the same page anyway, and it's it's Alex Cora. Okay. Yeah. But do you think that's going to happen? Uh, what do you, I don't think there's much blockage. I think people's memories of what happened. I mean, it might be brought up for another week or two about like you know his involvement. You know, I don't with, think I don't think I don't know what I don't. I can't think our, of anybody else it would be. My big yeah. question here is: Are we, us three, or maybe Tom, Phil, whoever it is, are we okay with Cora being back? Do you think it's a good yep. move? Mm-hmm. I do too. Yeah, I think it's the best move. Yeah, I think it's a move that pleases fans. I think it's a move that pleases the players. And I think he's the person that needs to lead this team as they come off an absolute disaster of a 2020 season. So I would be downright shocked if Alex Cora isn't back. If he's not back, I think that means that the Red Sox are going to look internal and that could lead to being Jason Veritek as the next manager. That's. I just don't think they're going to bring anybody else outside of the organization, and I don't. I really don't. I think it's either Veritek or it's Cora. Uh, if Cora is the manager, Jason Veritek will be the bench coach. That's my bold take. I could see that happening. Yeah. That's my take because they already got rid of lame duck Renicky, so he's gone. But – they have kept some people that have close associations with core already and our friends. So Ramon Vasquez, who's an integral part of the coaching staff was brought back to stay. That's another key sign to me. That's telling me that the Red Sox are looking to bring him back. And let's be honest here. I think this was what the Red Sox had envisioned after this whole suspension and everything came about. It's why they put the title interim manager on Renicky. It's why they kind of kept things you know, lock and key on a couple things, on a couple situations. I think this is the plan all along. 
to hire yeah. him? To get him back, to have him sit out for the year, yeah, have I somebody think, else just fill in and then bring him back. I, I think, yeah. I they, think they all. Probably, yeah. They probably sat down with him and said, listen, we, 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 we have to do this just to keep, uh, just to keep face. And when the, when the season's over, you'll be back for the season after. I think I, that's, the, I think that's logical. And I think and, you'll, and, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, I, I just thought, and it, it's, and I don't, I don't. Th I mean, I don't think they were expecting the season to go as poorly as it did. But they, I don't think they were planning on keeping Renicky as man as manager no. of the team either, even if it did go better. Lame duck, lame duck manager. Yeah, I think you you heard a lot uh, in the halls of the Red Sox offices. Man, thank God for COVID, right, guys? And it's like, ugh, ugh. oh yeah, thank, thank um, great God. Uh, but no, that was like this season is like. All the, the craziness aside, the season is kind of a blessing to them because it feels like a broken uh, like a broken play. It feels like it's just, you know, something that a lot of people – you won't forget this season, but you're also not going to <laughs> – I'm going to try to. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to really you won't – you won't be able to forget any of this, but it will be one of those things where you're going to try to put it out of your head because no one's going to be like, hey, who was the champion of that COVID year? I mean, maybe they will. I don't know, but it's just like yeah. – I mean, they they will if it goes Tampa's way for all uh, every sport. You know, that's a that's a good point. Um, yeah, I actually, man, I wasn't even thinking about the Bucks too. So we'll see. We'll see. And we'll get to them because I was also wrong again. I was wrong <laughs> twice last week. Listen, I was wrong we twice. Plenty, we got hours okay. of tape. That's all. <laughs> we got hours. Uh, Sitting no, in the I was moron wrong. seat today. I was wrong too. I think I I think I agreed. And I, yeah, I you, backed, you all you all dissed me about how the Packers are, are are the Packers. Well, yeah, I thought Aaron Rodgers would at least show up. He did, but it it had to be like a pound of uh, you know poop in his trousers. But I mean, like he showed up as Ben Roethlisberger. Or something. Yeah, I guess. Well, even Ben Roethlisberger has had a decent season this year. Ben, yeah, I mean, but like I but said last week, I know what you mean. Though. But like I said last week, you know, the Steelers the Steelers are always a concern. Yeah. On uh, just to close off baseball from everything, the Red Sox will also have some different ways of bringing in potentially some new players or signing some free agents to help out the team. One of or two of the players that are high up on my list, either one, this person or the other person, I can't make up my mind on what I want to do. Uh, one of which I think I would pay George Springer to come in and occupy center field and be that next big player that the Reds – I think fans would like him. I think he'd fit in here well, and he's a free agent with the Astros. The other move, older move, that would be Marcelo Suna. He played for the Braves this year, had a bounce-back year. He's a free agent as well. So you got to pick and choose here. I personally would rather go with George Springer because there's your center field occupier right there, and it kisses Jackie Bradley. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, Springer's a so, great – Great bat and good defensively. So, I mean, like – and he's a proven winner. So, I mean, like, yeah. doesn't seem like there's much of a – I mean, I like – I'm actually one of the guys who like uh, Jackie Bradley. But he's not – you know, he's getting paid too much. He's not – he's not a – Springer's more consistent at the plate than yeah. Jackie Bradley. And, I mean, he's not yeah. – I wouldn't proven put track, him in the same proven tier. Proven track as, record. I wouldn't put him in the same tier as, like, uh, fielding. Yeah. But yeah. I would definitely put him up there. He's good. I wouldn't say he's, I not, wouldn't say he's yeah. the worst outfielder, but I also want to say he's, you know, better than Jackie Bradley. Because money's not going to be an issue this offseason with things getting freed up on their payroll, get out of jail card, or basically whatever it was, the payroll luxury tax. So it resets. The other move that I think is very likely to happen, because I'm hearing a lot of rumblings that this could happen, is we all know the pitching staff needs a boost. What do we think of Trevor Bauer? He's a head case. <laughs> but I think us fans need that. I think he'd fit in here tremendously. Oh, well, I mean, you look at our track record of, of head case pitchers. You had Jonathan Papelbon. You had Clay Buckholtz. Yep. You had um, Bronson Arroyo. And they all had. I mean, a, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take, good... I'll take Trevor Bauer. I'll take him. Never hurt. Quality gets the job done. Had a great year. So if you got to dish out the money to land him, I say do it. 
Get him in yeah, there. Yeah, but he, he also had a Win great the fan year. Base he also over. had a great year in the National League, which is an easier league to, to pitch in. It's a good point. And then Tom, he would have then he would point. have to I mean he he struggled plenty on the Indians and now you want to have him in the toughest division in the American League. It does have its red flags on the play too. It does have its its you know, there's a curveball on the play with it. And I agree with your take on that too with the National League versus American. It's a lot different. Anything else you want to mention on baseball? Because I do want to talk football next. I got and also points. apologize. I also want to apologize for my bashing. Not really bashing, but I pretty much said that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it's amazing. I want to talk Buccaneers before the Patriots, but I want to talk the Bucs first. I said the Bucs would lose to the Packers. I said that the Packers, this could be their year. I thought that Aaron Rodgers was on the path of proving people wrong, and this could be the year that he gets a Super Bowl, you know, gets to the playoffs and does a nice job. Wrong. <laughs> Dead wrong. It was, it, was a la it was a laugher. It was an absolute embarrassment for the Packers. It was, it was just the laughing stock, laughing stock of um, – Hello? Did you lose me there for a second? Hold on. No, we got you. No, we're oh, we're listening. Got, okay. What's that? It was a laughing stock. It was very, very um, unexpected to me that the Bucks would come and absolutely destroy uh, the Packers. The Bucks, I believe they look like probably one of the best teams in football right now. Are we confident enough to say that? Uh, from what I yep. saw, they looked pretty efficient. And the fact that they dismantled them – I mean, just really went like they really attacked Rodgers. Who I mean, like they were four and zero, and they looked and the, and the Packers weren't a soft four and zero. I didn't think they were a soft four and zero. I thought they were like a decent, um, a decent four and zero. And I just was I was surprised. And also, like Tampa's running game is like that's one thing. It's just kind of like last time the Patriots won a championship. What was the common denominator? They had a good O line, and the running game was you know legit. Right. And I think, you know, Tampa Bay has one. They have like 80 good running backs. It's crazy. Right. Well, so I was watching um, before that game, I was watching that NFL Network, I think, or I was watching the pregame for the past game or something. And they were talking about how, like, the Packers had had an easy, easy schedule up until that point and that that would, like, really be the test for them because they, they don't really have that difficult of a schedule this season. Um, I mean, you know, the Bucks. the Bucks look good. Um, I was actually talking to my coworker and he thinks they're going to go like a 12 and four and 11 and five. Um, because we were looking at, we were talking about it and we were looking at the schedule and stuff and they still have to play the Saints one more time. And then they, uh, they play the Falcons two of the last three games of the season, which I know the Falcons don't look good, but it is the, also the end of the season, too. So who knows? I think the biggest game for the Bucs is going to be against Seattle. I mean, that's, that's going to be a tough one, too. But I think, I, I think they're really going to prove something if they can uh, – if they play – when they play the Saints, they're going to end up beating them. Or, or I, that, that's, I think that's going to be the proving game. I, I, I think, yeah – you know, having playing Seattle is gonna you know prove how good of a team they are, but they also weren't really a team when they played the Saints the first game of the season. I also think I also think that the Saints kind of got lucky to get that win as well too to lead off this the season. I mean, what we've seen from the Saints is really nothing. I mean, they've always been oh look at the Saints. The Saints are a threat. Saints don't scare me, not with that boob as a coach, Peyton. Please. No, I, yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But. So, overall from that game from the Packers, you had the Packers take an early lead. It was, I believe, 10-7 at one point or 7 nothing, and then it led to 10-7 Packers at then. But then Brady and company just completely took over. But – I was a lot. I was very much impressed with the defensive effort too from Tampa, with the turnovers, the interceptions leading to points. You also had Brady connecting with Gronk for a touchdown. That was fun. That was fun. Unexpected. I I still want to see more of what Tampa's going to do. I really, for the first time this past week, after seeing what the Patriots did, and we'll get to the Patriots in a second. 
Do you think the Patriots are regretting the move and letting Brady go? No. You don't think so? No. I, and, but I will, I will say the biggest testament for – I mean, before we go on into the Patriots, but the biggest testament for the Bucs is going to be whether or not they can tr- control their team and, and not get as many penalties. Well, they certainly did a much better job this past week, and it looked like from practice and everything they were much they, – they were a different team. They were disciplined. Will that trans, translate over to this upcoming week? We'll, we'll have to see. But there was zero, zero penalties on the Bucs that last game. That mm-hmm. was a, that was, that's what stood out to me the most. And that's, that's what I think the winning formula is going to be for them to win games, is not ahead, get Phil. penalties. Oh, no, I'm just going to – I agree with Tom. I don't think – regretting, I think, is also kind of a moot point because I don't think there was anything really to mend uh, that break. I think Brady was out of here. I think he had decided that he wanted to go. Maybe I a couple, agree, Maybe a couple of years ago that would have been able to, you know, do something about it, but I don't know. But I – uh, yeah, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Yeah. No, there's 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 zero regrets. I mean, if yeah. you if you look at it, if you look at it, they only had two practices before that game. Newton hadn't played in two weeks. Yeah. And yeah, you were da- you were down David Andrews again, and you had Joe Tooney snapping the ball. And I know he's done it before, but he's also made some terrible snaps in the past. Yeah. Right, I mean, so I, let's tr- let's let's transition over to the Patriots know. game. So that that's a good that's a good statement, Tom. Um. I. I I thought it was one of their worst football games I've seen a team play in a long time. Against one of the worst teams in the league right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I uh, one of the things I didn't watch all of it from what I, I listened on the radio a bunch because it was all over the place on Sunday. But, yeah, it just seemed like they were a, a discombobulated team, kind of like where Tampa Bay was maybe the first couple games of the year. But I think – I don't know. This – like this whole season, much like with baseball, it seems like it, it's all kind of coming unglued in a lot of ways. But also, you know, wait, let, let's see until like a, another couple of weeks. Let's see where the Patriots are. I, I, think, I think they'll bounce back. I think they'll bounce yeah, I think back. They'll be, I mean, like I said, they only, had, they only had two practices before the game. They've had Den, two. And Denver didn't yeah. even travel until Sunday. So I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I should. I, I shut it off much later than I should have. <laughs> well, I no, should have shut it off after the. Won. I should have shut it off after the third Broncos. They still could have won. That's right, Phil. Of, yeah. No, I, I should shut it off after the third Bronco field goal instead of after the second Cam Newton interception. <laughs> Which I didn't. I only heard them. Like I didn't see any of those interceptions. I only heard over the radio. It just seemed like they were like, "Yeah, what the hell is he doing?" Well, the first uh, one was a deflection, but he still yeah. shouldn't have thrown it. The guy jumped up literally as he was about to, you know, as he was still in the windup. Yeah. The, Jonathan the Jones was the one that had the two interceptions, right? Yes. Oh, the former uh, Paps? Yeah. Jonathan oh, wow. Jones had, had the interceptions. Well, that's kind of wild. Uh, but the, what, what's his name? Uh, J.C. Jones had the cra- – was that the one who had the crazy – That's what forward? I mean. I'm sorry. J- J.C. J. C. Jackson was the J. one that Jackson. had the two. Start, there you go. There oh, you go. For, That's for us name. or for the Patriots? Yeah. Or, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about for the Patriots who had the oh, two okay. interceptions. That's who I meant. Sorry. No, Newton threw two interceptions too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And I and I shut it off. I shut the game off after the second one, like late in the third quarter. But to but Tom and Phil, your, your two points with, yes, the Patriots only having two – practices in basically 14 days yes they were not prepared i i get that you can't hey, don't let me you can't, have Tom's point you can't no, you, you gotta take credit with it. With it. i mean credit is credit we do i'm out you can't you can't prepare for an opponent by going on a zoom call to prepare for you know whatever team it is so as much as the broncos could be a joke in the nfl not really a joke but not a super tough opponent they certainly weren't ready for a real game understandable because they've had so many roadblocks in the way we're trying to get back on the football field with COVID tests and this one testing and this one being negative. This will be in positive cam Newton being out. You had Gilmore out all kinds of commotion from that. So I don't blame them for having a really poor game, but the things that I was concerned with, Cam Newton was not sharp whatsoever. And I know he had the virus and I know he hasn't been a hundred percent healthy, but let's break that down for a second and think about how poor he threw that football 
this past weekend. I personally am concerned because what I saw this past weekend is what we've seen when Cam was hurt and not as effective with uh, the Carolina Panthers in the past couple seasons. I think we need to put the brakes on Cam Newton as your future quarterback here with the Patriots. You need to, you need to be cautious with it. I think it's, it might not be the best idea to have this guy be your, you know, your next Tom Brady face of the Patriots quarterback type. I think it's worth exploring what other things could potentially look like. And that's leading to me going into the whole Garoppolo take, because we're going to see Jimmy Garoppolo this upcoming weekend. And they're kind of, of San people, Francisco's on the kind of decline. They're on the, they're on the kind of go, trending in the wrong direction. But this is an opportunity here where if Garoppolo goes and proves that he can win and beat the Patriots this upcoming weekend, and I, I won't be shocked if he wins. I, I won't. Will the Patriots think about potentially if Garoppolo is available, bringing him back? Well, you said no last week, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason the reason you have to think about it is after the performance of what you saw from Newton. I think, sadly, the 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 beginning parts of what we've seen of his career with the Patriots was good, but that could have been a tease in a way. That could have been his real high point. He could be going in the wrong direction, and he could be one big hit away from being hurt again. He's been injury prone for his career. I mean, a lot of people haven't thought about that. So is Garoppolo, though. I would say Cam Moore. I, He's well, been around the league Cam more. Moore, He's been around the Cam league Moore, more. But I would say him more, but Garoppolo hasn't been on the field enough to be able to say more for him, too. So who's got the better track record right now? I'd say Cam. Yeah. Yeah, but who – I mean, you got to think about Cam is – how old is Cam? But you got to think about your future. See, yeah. that's why it's, it's one of those seesaw kind of battles because you got to think about, okay, who might be better, but – who sets me up better down the line and in the future? Could that still be a Garoppolo or somebody else on the outside? You know that not. Here? I mean, I, I, don't. I would, I would prefer, I would prefer Garoppolo because he knows the system. He's been, yep. he was here for a number of years, and he wouldn't, it wouldn't take as much time as someone else to, you know, get used to the playbook and all that. Correct. But that's I Belichick's mean, boy, I think. I think that's who Belichick I, I wants to be, coach. I wouldn't be surprised to see him back here. I truthfully feel this is going to be a one-and-done season for Cam here. I, I do. That's just how I, I think it's going to happen. I've been I, wrong. I, 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 I've probably, been wrong. I was wrong last week. I was wrong. I was wrong multiple times. I think but have, I, I just – I got this feeling where I, I'm I, thinking that it's just not looking likely – that Cam's here for the long haul. I think we just have. I think we have to wait and see what happens the next two games. Because I yeah. mean, like he, he hadn't played for two weeks, and then they expect him to be the all-star MVP quarterback that he was for the first four games after two practices. I mean, I, I mean, I don't even think this this week really past week factors in as much. I'm, I'm kind of with Tom on that, but I also think I think the plan overall was just like you have him for the bridge year. Then, but I mean, who's going to replace him, Jared Stidham? I mean, what happened? I mean, I also think like they'll change it up. I mean, because if something else comes along that's better, they'll go with it. And if Cam is a better fit, then they'll be like, all right, we'll sign him for what was it like two more years or something? And because how old is Cam now? Thirty-two. What's his age? I always forget. He's thirty. Uh, I want to say, yeah. Is it thirty-one? Thirty-one. Yeah. So two more years wouldn't be a bad, you know, two or three more years isn't a horrible way to go. I, I, but who knows? I mean, he also. If they give him a four, five, six year deal. Oh, I don't know about that, man. I would be very cautious with that. I would not do that. No you, way. I don't know if they would. I mean, they don't do that regardless. Well, here's the other thing, too. Do you, think another, a, do you yeah. think another NFL team would offer him something like that? Yeah, I think uh, maybe not five or six, but something like. Three to four. Two or, or three, yeah. Three yeah. Four. I mean, I wouldn't be – if they did another year, if they just tacked on another year, or even if they just franchised them, 
or just did like a two year thing. Cause I don't, cause I mean, what did they do to the, one of the greatest quarterbacks who ever walked the, the earth? They just kept like one year deal or two year deals. And the well, twilight I bet, career. I bet, I bet Belichick's sitting there waiting to see what San Francisco does with Garoppolo. I bet that's yeah, one sure. of the things he's looking at right now. Oh, I, I think, I think so too. That's why I brought it up. It's because mm-hmm. of that connection. He's been here before he's done that. And you already know that Belichick really wants to, coach Garoppolo I mean he's been he's flat out come out and said he wish he had a chance to coach him so Mm -hmm. maybe maybe that is what happens I do think that this game though this upcoming weekend is it's got me interested because there's a lot of things to look for and to observe as a fan and that somebody you know who analyzes stuff like kind of like we do to see what things look like with the Patriots after a bad loss but to also see how Garoppolo responds from criticism with him not being as great as people expected him to be. So uh, I'm curious to see how things go. Me, I am going with the Patriots with getting the victory. I think the Patriots uh, bounce back well, but I think it's going to be a close game. I don't know how you guys feel on that. Yeah, I I think, I mean, I think if things go the way they've, if they've collected themselves and they're ready to go, I think it'll be uh, it'll be a good game at least. I mean, this past game was like the last like quarter was kind of nuts because like Denver just ran the ball into the ground, and maybe that's what San Fran will try to do here too. Um, but you know what? I think Cam will be a lot better. I think they'll be a bit sharper, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I haven't heard any reports this week about other outbreaks or people getting the virus mm-hmm. or anything like that. Mass so shopping. I think. I think that, yeah, I don't think they're doing any of that kind of nonsense. So mm-hmm. I think they should, hopefully should be in good shape. Um, anything else on the football end, uh, on the Patriots or Buccaneers, anything? People are dropping like flies. <laughs> like injury wise. They are. They are. Um, so, they are. And we'll see. We'll see where the, yeah, it sucks. I mean, we'll see where the NFL is in a month. And we'll see if we'll still have games playing. But, um, yeah, hey, for now, do what you can, you know, take it in. On the uh, the basketball front, uh, I heard a rumor. I know Phil is in and out here, but I've heard a lot of rumors about Gordon Hayward, trying to figure out what they do with Gordon Hayward. Is he a part of the long-term future here? Is he tradable? I think you said on the show prior that Gordon Hayward is somebody that you would definitely want to keep here. Um, I've heard rumors I'm, I'm that on the fence. I'm always, you know, on the fence. Yeah, kind of. I mean, we'll see. I heard a rumor that the Pacers were interested in Gordon Hayward. So my question to you yeah. was, what would it take, or what would you like in return if the Celtics were to trade a player like a Gordon Hayward? I mean, maybe Sabonis. Maybe, I, yeah, maybe uh, Arvidas Sabonis' son. Maybe it's something like that. I mean, a, a big, a real big. Uh, the one thing Gordon Hayward Hayward does on this team, and he, I don't know, he he provides at the very least a good fifth or sixth man kind of thing. Okay. So I mean, but he's going to be too expensive, or he's going to be expensive enough where it's going it's going to be tough to pay everyone. I I don't know how it all susses out. So you're you're basically saying that Gordon Hayward is overpaid. I think he, I think he's commanding a salary that doesn't, you know, justify necessarily everything he's done. And you know what? Right. We haven't seen him. We saw him do really well uh, this past season, and at the beginning of uh, the bubble, like eight game or like eight games leading into the playoffs, and even like a uh, little bit of the first game of the playoffs, it literally was game one of the playoffs where he uh, he got hurt. So I mean. I don't know, man. He, if you bring in some other legs, someone even younger or even like another big, and maybe even you package something to uh, Indy, uh, Indianapolis or Indiana and you get another big and another like nice, uh, I don't know. Complimentary player of some sort. Yeah, backup point guard or backup uh, forward. I think a real like, uh, I don't know. I know if I would GM, first of all, I would say goodbye, Danny Ainge. I'm, if, I, if I were the GM, I'd make moves. Yeah. They well, that'd need be the owner. He's depth. the GM. They need depth. The depth that we saw was not good enough. Look at Miami's bench and they had. I mean, they could go to an Andre Iguodala off the bench, 
who single-handedly helped with game six and that victory in the yeah. championship series. He did. The Celtics lack the bench. They lack somebody coming off. They lack that 2008 James Posey, Eddie House, yeah. those types of players. Or P.J. So, Brown, all that stuff. Yeah. P.J. Brown, Sam Cassell, those Sam types Cassell, yeah. are things that are needed, in my opinion, if the Celtics really want to be a champion. You need the depth. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Danny Ainge felt like they were at that spot where they could win something. But I also don't think – I don't think he first saw what happened to the season or what was going to. So – and there were a couple – there was a uh, Bobcat player who um, – uh, what's his name played with? Uh, oh, wow, the point guard. Oh, my God. Oh, Kemba. With Kemba. Kemba. Kemba Walker, who Kemba played with. And I forget who nabbed him. I forget who nabbed the Bobcat player. But uh, Kemba was like, man, we could have used him. And it's one of those things it wasn't where – It wasn't Marquise or, or – No, it wasn't – Morris Brothers, right? Okay. No, it wasn't one of the Morris. But I was happy he won one, actually. I was happy he got to win a championship, uh, yeah. be it with the Lakers. But it was still kind of – it was kind of cool to see uh, Marcus, uh, which turned into Marquise, which was kind of cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I – yeah. And Marquise Brown is also another name that's – he's a great off-the-bench player. We actually had a lot of those guys we let go last year or the year prior because, uh, you know, you need to kind of shake up the core. And, yeah. But I did like so Brown. So that's my hope, at least, with, with what I'm hoping for in the offseason, is there's some names that come together that are good bench types that can come off and give you good well, minutes. I, yeah, and right. I want a legit center. I mean, I want, like, a legit Aaron, center would be great Aaron too. Baines. I mean, it, and you know what? It, it's one of the things, like, the Celtics are great small. That's kind of their gimmick. But if you added another, like – you need a, a big. player. Yeah, if you added like a player who could who could shoot who has a jump shot, even if you have added like a Clint Mansell or something. Um, there. That'd oh, not cool. Clint Mansell. That's uh, the guy who's with the the Houston Rockets right now. Or no, he's with uh, Portland. I forget. But uh, yeah, you need to switch that up. You That's the type get... that I think you need. I, I would be in total agreement with that. Now, Tom, on the hockey front with the Bruins. Is there anything going on with this team? Like, what are they doing? What is happening with the Bruins? Uh, they're just chilling. <laughs> it's embarrassing, I, isn't it? Isn't it I, so bad? Yeah, I mean, you know, we haven't really seen them make any big moves until the last second. I don't even think Chara's coming back. If he does, he does. If he doesn't, oh, well. I know the Bruins signed Grizzly to an extension, but my yep. question here to you is, do you think it's worth it? And do you think he's ready for these big minutes that they're expecting him to take? Yeah, I do. So that you think is a good move. I think that was a good move, but I mean, I know I your mean, take it, on it, Kevin Miller was like, what the heck? Yeah. That, that, was, was, a, that, that was, was a stupid, that was a stupid signing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's classic Don Sweeney. He's probably worth I mean, I wouldn't, be surprised if we don't see a big move until like right before the season starts. It's also looking more and more clear that Tuka Rask is going to be back and be your goaltender. So that's another thing that looks pretty clear. And another thing that seems very clear to me is that the Bruins are really valuing uh, Jacob Studnicka on that second or third line. And my question here to you is, do you think he is ready to take valuable minutes on one of those lines or is this stupid? I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get more young guys in to see what they're capable of because they know that their top guys are going to be done soon. I think that's what I think that's part of the reason why we're not seeing some of these guys come back. That's why they're moving. They're not signing, re-signing some guys because it's more money. So they're trying to free up some space. The other question that I had is I've heard a rumor that David Pasternak is hurt and will not be ready to play for a significant amount of time when the season begins. I don't know if, I don't know if that's true or, or not, but it I'm wouldn't surprise pretty, me. I'm concerned on that. It wouldn't surprise me, but that's, that's a pretty big, we knew, we knew when the playoffs that he wasn't a hundred percent himself. We knew that that was right. He had something with his groin when he jumped up and, I don't want to get into that lower extremity, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But it does seem like that greatly has impacted him. And 
I just don't know how the Bruins are going to be able to be one of these top teams right now in the NHL. Right now, I think they're very mediocre and average. Matched up to everybody else. I mean, you got the, uh, the Canadians have gotten better. The Maple Leafs have certainly gotten better. Well, and, the, well, and B- Buffalo signed Taylor Hall now. So Buffalo has gotten better be. too. So make a freaking move, Don. Like Don Juan, let's go. Yeah, he needs to. He needs to make a. I mean, oh, Craig I'm, Smith. I'm is, very down. I'm very down on the Bruins. I'm very down. It's amazing that they're just kind of settling. And oh, we'll be okay. Don't worry. We don't need a big player. Well, you do. Figure it out. I don't want to hear the excuse about oh, we're up against the salary cap when you can go and sign a a has been like Kevin Miller to a stupid contract. Like, come on. But we're up against the salary cap. Oh, you know what? Mute. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, anything else we want to say before we wrap up our show here today? Covered a lot. Uh, watch horror movies. That's all. Watch some fun horror stuff. Um, here's my take before we wrap up. Speaking of the Halloween kind of theme, I watched a real stupid one this past week. Ooh, um, which one? It was it was the one on Netflix, Hugh, uh, Hubie Halloween with Adam Sandler. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Was yeah. it any good? Don't, or was it just, don't, no. don't recommend it. <laughs> no. No. It was actually shot in Marblehead, too. It was. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was neat to see the different attractions and everything, because uh, I've driven by a lot of these different places. But it was, it was so stupid. Oh, my God. I like got that hope that one Adam Sandler movie that he puts out now is going to be good, but... All of his stuff, but the original stuff from you know the 1990s into the right before the 2000. That was his best stuff. But that's a movie that's out on Netflix. Uh, I gave it a I gave it a try, and it's still sitting there waiting I, to finish. And it's I not, recommend it's not going to be finished. I recommend a new Unsolved Mysteries came out this past week. I recommend that on Netflix. Nick, what's your Dave Portnoy rating on that though? Oh, don't. Uh, and also a zombie movie called Alive on Netflix. I recommend it. On uh, Hubie Halloween. Yeah. A five five point two. Oh, that's that's low. Yeah, that that that's not even worth a bite. <laughs> that's uh, but anyways, we will see you again before Halloween and everything. So we hope everybody has a a great week. We should have a champion for the World Series the next time we see you, I believe. And if any news about the Bruins, the Celtics, or hopefully the Patriots have some good, a good game this upcoming weekend, we'll talk about that on our next show. And we'll break everything down for you the next time we see you. So for Nick Face and Tom Smith and Phil Healy, we will see you again next time on another virtual edition of Face the Facts. See you later. Adios.